Okay, Super Bengal. This is the um, original Super Bengal. Of course, there was the Bengal 23 channel before this. Uh, this came in from a mate of mine, Eric, um, up in Queensland, and it's um, uh, one that, when it came up for sale, um, I mean, we all love a bargain and we love to barter and all that, but sometimes you've got to be smart enough just to say, um, you know what, um, I reckon that's worth every cent of it, and just send the um, request for bank details, which is what we did on this one. It, um, it wasn't um, huge money for, for what it is, and I thought, I just haven't seen one as clean, to be honest, um, for a while. Um, and uh, just to give you an idea, like we haven't cleaned the top yet. Once we polish this top, and all it is, you get a few marks like this here, but they polish out beautifully, and Paul will tell you about this. The top here, you'll always get a few little superficial bits of pieces in them, um, but this is so clean, cleaner than any I've ever had before. Um, Eric took all the knobs off, and had this was foam packed everywhere. It was just so, so well done, and it just marvellous. Uh, really impressed with the way he packed it. When he said, oh, I'm just worried, did it get down okay? I said, mate, it's one of the best packaged parcels I've ever received in my life. I said, um, you should come and work here. You know, I sort of and um, ship our boxes out. Anyway. But, um, yeah, it comes with the original um, Pierce Simpson mics, mic and um, uh, obviously 240-volt um, uh, uh, lead on these because they've got their own internal power supply, which is kind of nice. All right. Um, haven't actually tested it yet, so let's, let's have a look. Um, let's put a bit of... Oh wow, that's a, sorry. That's a lot of signal I've got. I've got about um, 40 or 50 microvolts going into that. Let's just take that back down. Let's take this back down to, um, oh. Uh, just trying to read my own thing there. Oh, hang on, we're too far down. Idiot. Sorry. I want it to be, and take that one down. This display is driving us mental. Right, let's take that down to 0.5. That's not 0.5 yet. Hang on. Let's get it on here. Sorry, I've got my adjustment out of it here. This um, this machine is driving me a little bit mental. Uh, 90. I just can't read it at the moment properly. Ah, there we go. Yep, 0.5. Right. Sorry. Um, <laughs> when I saw the S meter still up, I thought. I'm obviously thinking it's 0.5, but it must have been 5 microvolts, have to be at least. Um, so, um, yeah, now that's reading, re uh, reading at 0.5 of microvolts, so really nice. And as you can see before, as we sort of step it up on my stepper, that's got a few problems in the attenuator at the moment. See that there, that click where it, it's almost missing one section. Here we go, it's got to recover. There we go. It's just the AGC recovering on the radio a bit. We are hitting it with a lot of, um, a, we're sort of putting 50 microvolts in there for S9. So, um, okay, so I'm going to take a guess and say when I hit transmit, one, two, three, four, five, yep, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Don't worry about my display here. Uh, it's miles off at the moment. One, two, three, four, five. Well, that's on the 20 watt scale. Hello, one, two, hello, hello, one, two. So that's just sitting around about 15 watts, you know, which is. Um, pretty much what uh, you'd expect for one of these. A little bit less, actually. Um, so, you know, might have had a tune in its lifetime. Um, we'll probably just go and recalibrate uh, the PLO, uh, the, sorry, the oscillators, just to make sure um, we're 100% on, and we'll go and check them AM upper, uh, lower, etc. And, yeah, it's about right there. Four to five watts there, so we're pretty happy with that. One, two, three, four, five, one, two. And, of course, the thing about the... Um, the Bengal was, it was a great base station in the fact that, you know, you could sit here and say, right, okay, um, oh, there you go, <laughs> that's lucky I didn't have to, normally we'd, we'd set the calibration here, um, so basically that calibrates up and down, um, and um, uh, if I hit the right one, calibrate, sorry, that one, um, and so the calibrate, you get that into the center there, and then, of course, we're on a dummy load at the moment, so that SWR is going to be one to one, and then we can go back to our RF uh, control there, a little bit of, actually, I just noticed, um, and this happens on these. You put a bit of glue behind them. Paul knows all about this. Um, they do come loose uh, uh, over time. You'll find these, the American Electronics. The, um, so that's an easy thing. And my suggestion to anybody is pull your knobs off. Um, and if you've got one spot that needs a bit of gluing, glue the whole lot. Just re-glue the whole thing. Um, but that's minor. Um, Eric, don't even worry about that. It's minor. Um, it might have been happening in the journey. Um, and, and that's actually a good point because Eric had, <laughs> had this done so well. 
Um, all the knobs were taken off. Everything was compressed with foam. Oh, amazing job. Never seen anything like it. Um, but um, yeah, so that's, that's an easy fix in two seconds. But overall, what a lovely radio. You know, it really is a lovely example. And I, I have not cleaned this thing up yet. I mean, that's what I mean is that normally... I'll show you a radio. We've already polished sometimes the covers and we've polished the front and we've done the knobs and we've done nothing to this. I've, I've had it here for a few days and I just haven't had a chance to uh, to get to it. I've been pretty crook, unfortunately, the last few days. So um, I was promising Eric I was going to get to it, I think, Friday night. And what is it now? Sunday night. Um, and I just had, yeah, um, it was Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I had a little bit of a relief at one stage on the Friday, I think it was. Oh, one of the days, oh, it's only because I had to get up because I was selling a HR Holden. I had to get loaded to a uh, car transporter. That was on the Friday. Yeah, I was a little bit better Friday, but I crashed and burned about 2 p.m. Oh, I just, yeah, it was gone. Um, so anyway, um, not to rave on too much about um, health and rubbish. Um, anyway, I don't know if we're going to hear anything on the antenna. Um, to be honest, uh, this time of night tends to be a little bit quieter. I'm just going to run the antenna lead through from um, the other room up through there where my cat is at the moment. And because um, uh, every time I carry the radio into the room, uh, you know what? Six and one half dozen the other. You know what? I'm going to carry the radio. You know what? I don't have to go for 12 volt lead. It's 240. No, I'm going to do the opposite. Forget what I just said. Let's, let's change rooms. Okay, so I am actually in my radio shack. Uh, but let me just go to channel somewhere where there's nobody. I'm going to have to tune. I'm on seven megs at the moment. Now, this um, auto tuner doesn't take long. SWR 1 to 1, good, that's what we want. Uh, now, that tuner is tuning a 40 meter antenna. Uh, that is hard to believe, but believe it or not, on 28 megs, not so much 27, 27 I do need to tune it a little bit, but on 28 megs, it actually tunes up on 490 as well as 40. When you do the maths, it sort of makes sense why it does it. Now, what do we got? Sideband works better, doesn't it? Oh, there's a little bit happening. Oh. I think they're saying up here there's been a bit of DX. Just have a little look. See if anything else. Not a lot on the band, but a little bit. Now keep in mind that they're not locals, they're they're skip. Um, sometimes we hear a little bit on um, Super Bowl. On channel eleven. Anybody hearing us here on channel eleven? Two two nine test test test. Anybody hearing us at all? You never know who's gonna come up on channel eleven from interstate sometimes. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, that's is def, sorry, this is the rotary dipole we're on. Um, so that's not going to have a lot of gain. I've got the 8 element beam that actually tunes quite well here if uh, needed, but for the moment, I don't think we're going to hear a lot. Yeah. Back on the side then. 229 testing. Anybody tell us if we're getting out? Just using an old Super Bengal base station. 229 testing. You never know. What a lot of memories are in this unit. I had one when I was about 12 years old. 12 or 13 it would have been. My cat's come back again. Hello cat. What are you doing Sophie? Sophie. Hello. Good girl. <laughs> Alright, back to the radio. Uh, 229 just testing an old Super Bengal 40 channel base station. Wonder if anybody's hearing us at all. 229 testing. Tangambalanga, North East Victoria. And I think that is the story of our life. Let's go back up where we heard some people. Yeah, it was bang on five kilohertz. 
cloth and uh, acting as if he, he was entitled to use it, even though it's not a correct channel. That's, uh, uh, took a little bit of offense at that, unfortunately. It, uh, I got myself a bit upset. 229 break? Yeah, well, um, It's out, they'll hear me. Got to remember, a lot of people on 27 megs are not running 15 watts or 10, 12 watts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm aware that that has happened, but it's so rare. That's, uh, it's, that's the first little asshole that I've come across. Oops. He's, uh, <laughs> he's actually been rather obnoxious about it. And then he says, oh, it's just the conditions. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Conditions don't put your five kilohertz off. Yeah, we get them everywhere. Yeah. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Exactly. I'd say they're both very strong to each other. Two two nine break. Wonder if you guys are hearing me at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not a chance. They're like five and nine to each other, I reckon. And that's going to happen at times. We're not really set up for twenty seven megs, particularly. Everything's sort of up on uh, ten meters for really getting into big signals and things. I could try the beam, I suppose, if we got lucky. Where are we pointed the... Ah, oh, geez, no, we're pointing at a WA. Yeah, well, no, I won't. I suppose it depends where these guys are. It's worth a go. Oh, oh. I don't know who it is, but okay. it's some Japanese guy who's... Let me just tune that antenna on. I'll just bring that beam into... Um, he definitely came up on the beam, so maybe he's in WA. Oh, gee, has a bit of trouble tuning this on... on yeah. Because I'm tuned up, this is tuned for, I was going to get it, I think, but it's tuned for um, 28490, so when I'm bringing it down here, I'm asking it to really do a lot. Yeah, hang on, I'll just go to manual for a minute, and I think we might better get away with that. Yep, yep, 1.3 is good enough. Well, I don't know if I want to go oh, here, to let's try that. Anymore, it, there's everyone and, and the bloody brothers and sisters out there at the moment. That's uh, really noisy. 229 break. Um, I think they're in WA. Just moved to 37, you know, because um, it's, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I've actually been having thoughts about uh, why don't we call 16 the uh, call channel. What I'm going to do, no I'm going to go to 35, because we know a bit of WA is coming in. Uh, 229 calling CQ, pointing over towards WA, 229 in northeast Victoria. Anybody, anybody in WA hearing us pointing over that direction, go ahead. Anybody in Perth or anywhere, anybody in WA here is uh, 229 just giving a quick test on a um, Super Bengal base station? Yeah, no, I think we're in trouble here. Sometimes to, uh, to get away from the rubbish as well. 229? Yeah, no, I wasn't talking about... Nah, um, <laughs> I don't think I don't so. Think Break, break. Go yeah, ahead, break. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, 229 in um, northeast Victoria, a little town called Tangambalanga. Uh, I'm just testing a Super Bengal base station we're doing a video on at the moment, a bit of a collectible. And I heard you guys, and I, I suddenly went over to the beam, and I take it you guys are over in the west somewhere, uh, somewhere I'm guessing. Go ahead. Yeah, affirmative on that. We're in the uh, city of Perth, or just out of the city of Perth. You've got the uh, three Zulu Kilo here, and uh, Clive is a chap on the side. Fantastic. Name's uh, Brent on the side, Boston Radio Echo, November Tango, Oscar November. Just using 12 to 15 watts on this thing. Uh, I've got an 8-element um, OptiBeam pointing at you. I've had to tune it down from 28490 just for this video, but um, seems to be tuning all right. Um, close, anyway. But look, thank you very much for this test. Much appreciated. And uh, Clive, if you can hear us, you're coming in here well as, uh, as well. Go ahead. Thank you very much. You know, I've still got one of those old uh, station masters sitting in the shed. 
Um, yep, I know the ones with the different base on it, etc. Um, I've still got a stock of um, original Station Masters. I've got the Station Blasters. I've got the other one that um, oh, the chap in um, oh, down in Melbourne makes. Um, oh, I'm gonna, sorry, I'm forgetting the name of the company now. Um, crazy these antennas are still sitting around the place but they are <laughs> i'm going to be accused of being a hoarder i think but anyway all right 73 is to you 229 it's brenton in tangambalanga northeast victoria all the best i appreciate the test so much all the best yep no worries here brenton and uh yeah as i say appreciate the call if you ever hear us up again then uh please call in and uh, we'll have a manner 73s brenton i've got a feeling i sent you an email about a radio at some stage Oh, you might have done. <laughs> Is that you, Clive? Yeah, Roger. Yeah, g'day, Clive. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, certainly, mate. We we do a bit, a little bit. <laughs> That's for sure. Go ahead. Yeah, I'll have to get back on here at some point. But um, I'm uh, running a, a Viking forty-seven forty at the moment. Um, only on a five-foot whip. You know, I I just put one of those on the museum shelf. A uh, brand new one in the box. Um, I just put it on the shelf the other day just to sort of have it. We've had it in the box for so long, the 4740, and, and they're becoming a bit of a rare beast. Um, no, that's that's a lovely collector's item, uh, absolutely. And, yeah, look, I'll um, if you email us, just um, the, the one thing I tell people, if I don't get back to you, bother me. Kick, kick me in the ass and, and, and just, you know, uh, definitely hold me accountable. Go ahead. Yeah, Roger. Uh, are you looking at moving that 4740 on at all, or are you going to keep it in your um, collection? Um, look, I've got a, probably three or four forty-seven forties. That was one that was in the box. Uh, there's some other ones as well. Uh, but yeah, ha we, look, we can chat about those. Absolutely. Um, look, that's the problem with my collection. It's ridiculous. There's four or five of everything, and that's just stupid. So we're obviously doing a bit of a clean out, Clive. Go ahead. Yeah, Roger. That. Yeah, well, this one um, I've got. Um, when I fired it up, um, it was so far a frequency. Um, you couldn't clarify anyone in, and um, the other thing is uh, the display had an issue, and it ended up being the because um, the uh, resistor array. It sounds like you're a technician, um, maybe anyway. So um, the resistor array on the um, for the display board, uh, five out of the seven resistors gone over circuit. Wow. You know what? Um, look, we've seen a few of those faulty, and you're right. I, I look. I trained as a CB tech, then went into a few other areas of electronics as I got older, but. Um, those little red resistor blocks that were on there, though they're red and green, but mainly red, um, you're right. Uh, we used to see every now and again where uh, multiple numbers of them just, uh, you know, because you, you automatically thought it was a display fault, but no, you, you'd sit there and have a look and go, well, hang on, get your resistor wheel out, and you'd suddenly start seeing, oh, <laughs> if I run my resistor wheel against these two points, I could see the display come back up. So, yes, you're 100% right. That, that was a common problem. <laughs> All right, well, look, I better finish this video up, uh, but thank you very much. Certainly proves this radio is working well. The lovely old Super Bengal. You'll see the video, and you guys can uh, look at yourself on... Um, just uh, just look up Brenton Meadows VK3CM on YouTube, and you'll see that uh, you're coming through to this old beauty so well. So uh, pleasure to have you guys on the video. Roger. Uh, cheers for that, Brenton, and um, I will be in touch anyway. I look forward to it. All right, 73s, guys. All the best. Yeah, you take it easy. All good. Yeah, cheers, Brent. Yeah, Brent. 73, it's Brent in Tangamalanga, northeast Victoria. Yeah, I thought I recognised the name in that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's a small world, eh? It certainly is. a small world. Yeah, it's a small world. Yeah, it was a bit surprised at that. But Let me just turn that down a bit. Thing, then, All right. So, this video was... I was, I was wanting it to be you know eight to ten minutes long so yeah we've gone 18 minutes to 19 minutes now but we'll finish it off under 20. thanks guys for having a look at this super bengal mark well it's not a mark it's a it's the super bengal you know what um some of us call them the mark ones and of course the mark two is the black one and got a couple of those here and the mark three i've got another one of those sitting out in the museum but this was this is the one i love the most i know it sounds crazy Oh, don't forget. And then there's the Bengal. There was the Bengal, the 23 channel Bengal. Um, and um, got one of those like new in the box that, uh, yeah, crazy. I don't know. I don't know why, because we've got other ones. It's, uh, as I said to these guys, we've got to clear some of this stuff out. You all know the story, so I'm not going to repeat myself again, but yeah, we'll get there. All right. Thanks so much for looking at this Super Bengal. Nearly said it again, Mark. One. <laughs> thanks for having a look at this Super Bengal. They're really a classic and so good to have these guys on there. We'll go back to 35 just to finish off. And there's still other stations coming in, that which was good. 
just proves that you can tune a 10 metre beam very easily. Um, took a little bit of, I had to manual, I, I did have to trick it a little bit. Anyway, all good. 73s guys, all the best. Cheers.